Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Thursday Theorist. Today we are talking about Cycle of the Werewolf. Yeah. Um, in case, if, for like the three of you out there that don't know, this was uh, adapted into a, an awesome 80's film called Silver Bullet with Corey Haim and uh, Gary Busey in it. It was an amazing, amazing film and it's also the uh, one of the first ways that, well, one one of the first movies that I saw that was Stephen King related in any way. Um, that one, Pet Cemetery was the first one, if you want to hear, I didn't really watch that whole movie though, but if you want to check out the story behind that one, check out my top five Stephen King videos, I'll link down there in the doobly-doo. But, Cycle the Werewolf is so much fun. It's one of those, one of those introduction books where I remember looking at the the gory just gnarly ass pictures in this book well before you know I I read it I didn't care too much about reading the book I was I can't remember how old I was when um, I saw it on laying out on the uh, my mother's night nightstand when I picked it up started going through it and just looking at some of the pictures and I mean things like the the image of the werewolves in the church um, the one of let's see here to see if I can find it. I think it's actually really early on. But uh, one of my favorite ones is the lady who's doing her, uh, con who's contemplating suicide, I think. Yeah, this one, man. This one. That one was gnarly. Uh, I just I just remember wondering what the hell was going on in that picture. Like I said, I can't remember how old I was. But this is before I even read uh, Dolores Claiborne. Um, when that came out, I think it was uh, 1993. I was 13, I believe. Um, when I stole that book out of my, the mailbox. Uh, anywho, but this one, I, I go back to this one every every year about this time, going the run up to Halloween, um, and that's why I left this one for you know this time. It's real. There's really no significance to the Dark Tower with this one, other than the fact that I can connect it with uh, Tarker's Mill and uh, Chester's Mill from Under the Dome. That. Chester's Mill is the town that gets covered by the dome, but the uh, and Tarker's Mill is mentioned in Under the Dome. In fact, the I believe the two towns are called the Twin Mills. If I'm correct, if I'm wrong, leave a comment down there in the doobly doo. But uh, and I connected Under the Dome with uh, my gray theory that I've that I've had ever since you know Carrie. So if you guys want to check that out, check out the video for Carrie for Under the Dome for uh, Tommy Knockers it. Any of those Thursday theorists, um, I just have such fond memories about this book, and most, but most of the memories I have about this book has to do with the visuals. Um, Bernie Wrightson has long been um, one of my favorite artists. Uh, sadly, he has since passed away. Um, as of recording this video, he, he's passed away, but. His artwork is amazing. The stuff that he did with the Dark Tower, also the stuff that he he's done for the fantasy and horror genre. Period. The man was amazing. But other than all of that, the only connection that I have is the one to Under the Dome. If you have any connections, I'd love to hear them down below. Um, I guess that's everything for this one. Um, I would like to know what. Is especially in the sense this is a shorter video I want to know especially from you guys what was your first introduction to Stephen King it doesn't have to be book doesn't have to be mo whatever it was whether it was something visual the first time that you ever experienced not heard his name but the first time that you ever experienced a Stephen King book movie a comic book, a graphic novel, something like this. Whatever it may be, leave your comments down there in the doobly-doo. Let's have a discussion. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Thursday Theorist Review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!